Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, 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 and thank you, thank you, thank you. This is it. This is brand new, baby. Whoo! Let me re uh, let me refresh my page here. Now, I gotta tell you right from the get go. That uh, I'm just refreshing my page here. So I have reconfigured. Uh, thank you, Laura. I've reconfigured the garage. The camera is now. The phone is quite a ways away from me. If you can hear me, if you can hear me well, just give me a thumbs. Like I said, my phone is quite a ways away from me at the moment. And that's where it's going to stay. So, the phone is quite a ways away. It's probably five, six feet away from where I'm sitting. So, I'm watching everything in here on my laptop. And, unfortunately, I don't have glasses where I can see that stuff. So, I have no idea how many people are viewing. But, I know with the time difference of three, four, four and a half hours, always grateful to have people here tuning in to Matt TV. On Facebook Live, yeah, we do it Monday through Friday. Most Monday through Fridays, 6 o'clock here on the West Coast in beautiful White Rock, British Columbia. The TV needs to be raised. Uh, yeah, I'm just kind of working out some different angles right now. So, But I'll, I'll definitely take that into consideration for the next broadcast. Okay, you can hear me well. I'm good. I'm glad, 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 glad. So this is going to be a busy 60 minutes. I got so much that I want to that I want to discuss. I'm just super stoked to be in this environment. Uh, anyone who has watched this show knows that when I'm in this environment, when I'm doing Matt TV, I am operating on a very uh, high level frequency, which is where I want to be, and I can only achieve that, accomplish that when I'm sitting here in this chair. I entertain you, you entertain me. It's give and take. It's a two-way street. So, we're going to talk about more about the show direction coming up in a little bit. Matt TV on the front, yes. It's the little things. It's the little things. Oh, I'm glad that Enzo uh, is taking a break from his baby life and checking out Matt TV. Ha <laughs> ha! Excellent. So, just let me scroll down here. So I can read all the comments. Read all the comments. Anyway, so here's what's happening in the next 60 minutes. We are going to do The Last 24, brought to you by Nick, Wayne the Great Product Plug, Toby's Edmonston Weather, and a new segment that has a great name to it. It's going to be called William's Wacky Soundbite of the Night. Anyone who saw my last broadcast knows that I want to incorporate as many people into the show as I possibly can. So... That being said, I have a Nick, Wayne, Toby, and William. They all have their names attached to segments in the show. So we're going to get to all those. And then at 6.15, 6.15 here on the West Coast, 10.15 Atlantic Time, I'm going to be calling Darren O'Donnell. Dude, you're going to want to hear that phone interview. The guy is an inspiration, no doubt. That's coming up at 6.15. You're going to definitely want to hang out and listen to that. And I'm so thankful, so grateful for the audience that I have back on the East Coast. I know the time difference. I know you're ending, winding down your day with me. And thanks, Jeff. And I, I really, really, really appreciate it. Toby's Edmondson Weather coming up, interview, and the show schedule. We'll get to the show schedule. I have been booking phone interviews. I have a great, I have two great phone interviews booked for tomorrow. I'm actually double booked. Double booked. Hey Wayne. So like I said, I'm just kind of glancing back and forth. I'm looking at my phone straight ahead. I have my laptop right here. Uh, I can't read the comments on my phone because it's uh, too far away for now. But I can read the comments as they come across here. So uh, if there's something that you want to say specifically to me and not generally out there for the ears of everyone else, please send me a private message. Not a problem. Phone interview coming up, show direction, and when we get into that segment of the show, and if the show goes a little bit over tonight, that's okay, maybe five, ten minutes. I just want to squeeze as much as I possibly can because I'm just totally jacked at what's happening in this garage right now. <laughs> I can go live. I know I can go live on computers. 
I, I, I know, I know the technology is out there, but on my end, if the pitcher freezes, it's really uh, can have a damaging effect on on your performance. You need to uh, you need to be able to see yourself to judge what you're doing, I guess. But I know, yeah, I just don't trust computers. I'd rather do it on a phone. Uh, anyway, so let's get into because I said in uh, ten minutes. In ten minutes, I'm going to be calling Darren O'Donnell, dude. Uh, well, that's his nickname, dude. His real name, his birth name is Darren O'Donnell. And we're going to talk to him real quick. He is a cancer survivor. He does pirate radio on C103, Moncton's rock station, the rock of the Atlantic. Uh, super great guy. You're going to want to listen to that chat. I haven't, I have texted and we do some Facebook messages back and forth, but we haven't really spoken on the phone in any great detail uh, since just before Christmas of 2015. So, what we're going to do here in a few minutes is we're just going to pick up from where we left off just before Christmas when we did a mat chat. So we're going to get the ball rolling on that in about 10 minutes. I will be making a call to Moncton, New Brunswick and talking with Darren O'Donnell. Uh, let's, do, let's do Toby's Edmonston weather. And this is a segment that will happen every night. And the reason why it's called Toby's Edmonston weather. Uh, Toby LaFrance a few weeks ago wanted to... Know what the weather was in Edmonston tonight because he didn't want to have to hear about it tomorrow. So this is Toby's Edmonston weather. I've already pulled up the page. And the Edmonston short-term forecast tonight, rain, low of 9 degrees. Clouds and showers overnight, Wednesday morning, light rain. Cloudy and showers continuing into Wednesday afternoon with a high of 11. And it's as simple as that. That is Toby's Edmonston weather. So I'm just going to... Mm, close that window and move along. Let's do, actually, we'll wait until Dude joins the conversation for that. We'll wait. We'll do William's Wacky Sound Bites when we get Dude in the phone here. Uh, coming up very, very quickly. So let me go back to my Facebook page. And it's kind of, I know there are people joining the conversation. Uh, I'm not sure how many people are live right now. If there's one person in here live, that's greatly appreciated. But looking back at it now, the phone is uh, quite a ways away from me, and I can't actually see. I know someone's sending me a t uh, some messenger stuff right now. But that is the beauty of that is the beauty of doing it live. You you do a show, and you look back at it, and you retweak it, retool it. As far as the set is concerned, um, absolutely, I, I love the space that I'm in. And I want to give a shout out to I want to give a shout out to the three guys that helped me, three co-workers, three buddies of mine, Etienne, John, and Gordy. Uh, came over on Sunday. I almost broke my foot dropping a table on my on my foot. A uh, heavy, heavy table. Um, how I did not do any damage other than uh, a really well, I, I bruised the bone in my foot. Let's just say that. So uh, kind of serious, kind of serious. Uh, we're going to be calling Dude here real quick, and I know this is, uh, I'm, as you can probably tell, how excited I am sitting here at this desk. I've waited to, I've waited to have this kind of uh, set up for a few weeks now, so I'm really grateful that everything has manifested, materialized, uh, but of course it did, because that's what I was putting out there, okay? Uh, I have the microphone here. This is not for uh, special effects. This is actually a pretty expensive microphone. This not so much. This is one of the first snowball microphones that I had, and uh, we go back a long way. We have a lot of additions together, a lot of additions. Uh, so let's move right along before we get a call, dude. I know I'm just uh, going on, but there is, there is structure, there is structure to Matt TV. I guarantee. Uh, the last 24 brought to you by Nick. Uh, I'm just going to quickly summarize what has happened on the street uh, since Friday morning. Uh, the vehicle, our our vehicle was, um, someone took property that did not belong to them out of our vehicle. It was all of Jen's teaching supplies for for the years and years and years, all all in one box, and it was all stolen. And through the tremendous effort. Uh, one RCMP officer in particular, Brooke, from the White Rock RCMP, went above and beyond. And within two days, and through a lot of hard work and digging around and doing investigative work, was able to retrieve every single piece 
of educational material that was stolen out of our vehicle. So, kudos to Woodstock RCMP. Uh, thank you so much, Brooke, for retrieving that. The, the, the so valuable uh, educational material. It's a lot of a lot of hard work and a lot of uh, a lot of heart went into that work. So so thankful for the Woodstock RCMP for getting that back. We are five minutes away from a phone call to Moncton, New Brunswick. Going to be talking to Darren O'Donnell. Dude, cannot wait to talk to that guy. We talked uh, just quickly this afternoon. We talked just quickly this afternoon. So uh, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. I see what you sent me here. Oh, I see. Oh, oh, I see. Yes. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about the camera. Oh, I see. No, the, the Matt TV. Yes, I did not use a level. I did not use a level. I should have. I should have drawn a straight line across that and put the letters down. Yes. I will fix that. Tomorrow night's show, Laura, that will be straight as an arrow. Yes, I'm glad we got it all back to you, Wayne. Thanks, man. Yes, uh, thanks, Laura. It's uh, not OCD. It's uh, it's you creating a spot for set director or creative design. Yeah, when Matt TV just it's it's growing, it's growing, and anyone that wants to come along for the ride, please, please, by all means, let's hook up. Let's have some fun. Life is too short. Life is too short to do something that you do not want to do. If you wake up in the morning and what you're doing is not fun anymore, it's time to go. Time, it's time to go. All right, so uh, continuing on with uh, wrapping up what's happened over here the next, uh, the last couple days. <coughs> Excuse me. Whew, I think that's the first time I've stopped for air. <laughs> Uh-oh. Attention to detail, yeah. Uh, but no, thanks. Thanks, Laura. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, so next door. Um, th there's just some bad energy happening next door. And we've been having to deal with it since Christmas time. Just a, a steady rotation of bad energy going into that location. And Jen and I were on the news last night because Jen called the news crew because the owners of the resident were completely oblivious, so they say, of the situation. And so the power of the media. So we're hoping that next door is cleaned up. They, they, they've gone through, you get three strikes, they have had multiple strikes against them. Uh, we're now the neighbors are rallying together and we are going to do whatever we can do legally to have that operation shut down. It's just, it's not good for the neighborhood. I'm sorry. Uh, our safety and our peace of mind must take precedence over I feel bad for the people next door but a lot of the people that were there were not there to recover from anything so unfortunate but life goes on life goes on two minutes uh, two minutes away from calling dude Darren O'Donnell uh, show schedule well let's just do this let's just do this right now Going to be talking with Darren O'Donnell here in a matter of uh, 90 seconds. Going to place the phone call to Moncton, New Brunswick. I, I work hard. Uh, I work hard to put a 60-minute show together every night. Five nights. That's 20 nights out of a month. This is what I want to do. I find it extremely challenging. But at the same time, that's what I need. That's how I thrive is to be challenged. So... What I've done is I've lined up phone interviews and in-studio guests, so I just want to brief you on that. Uh, tomorrow night, I will be speaking with uh, two individuals. One, her name is Morgan O'Shea. Uh, O'Shea. Morgan O'Shea. She's Vancouver's NDP candidate, and Morgan is hoping to become the first transgender MLA in British Columbia. So I'll be talking with Morgan tomorrow at 6 o'clock, and I'll follow that up. I'll be speaking with uh, Monica Blihar, who is the owner, CEO, founder of MAB, Make and Break Art Studio and Boutique Gallery. And we'll be talking to her about the uh, 7th Annual Gala uh, coming up May 12th, the Art World Expo. You can find out more information on that at theartworldexpo.com. Two phone interviews tomorrow night. 
Thursday night, I'll be speaking with Brendan Green, the Reverend Green at Unit 777. That will be 1015 tomorrow night. And next Monday, I'll be interviewing Teresa Blackburn, magazine owner, publisher, managing editor at Ageless NB. Also, Woodstock Town Council will be speaking with her. And next Tuesday, in-studio guest, I will have Debbie Dalton. She is co-chairing the Fraser Valley West Gutsy Walk. Uh, gutsy Walk next month in Surrey. Uh, Deb will be soon be taking the role of Fraser Valley West Chapter Community Outreach Lead. So, in studio guests next week and phone interviews as well. Uh, still working on getting Sean McDonald in studio, uh, co host Dave Keenan. All that coming up in the month of May. Woohoo! Okay, it's time to call Dude. Time to call Dude. Everyone's having a good night. Just give me one of them thumbs. I can't really, like I said, the phone's too far away. Definitely tomorrow night, Laura. The the camera view will be different tomorrow night. I guarantee you. the camera will be different tomorrow night. Okay, we're just gonna give Dude a call here. I feel like a game show. Uh, this is gonna be fun. Okay, here we go. One, five, oh, six. I just want to make sure everyone can hear me. Dude. Yes. You are live. Live, live, live. On Matt TV. On Matt TV? Yeah, brother. What's happening, man? You mean I'm live right now? Yeah, man. Why? What were you doing? Really? Oh, my God. I, I, I can't even tell you. But I can tell you what. I'm really excited to be on Matt TV tonight. It doesn't happen every day. Dude, I have waited so long. We we haven't spoken since before Christmas 2015. A lot has happened in your life. Uh, a lot has happened in my life. So that's definitely where I think the conversation should start. What? I would think so. It should start right where we left off. And, um, you know, I think that takes us back to a time where I was really coming off something um, pretty awesome going on for me because I was just at the end of uh, uh, having uh, cancer for four years. And that nice little uh, bump in the in the road was uh, having Sean Crawford call me, ask me to do pirate radio with him uh, for fun. I think that's I think that's where we left off. If, if I'm not correct. Yeah, I think you. Tell were... me if I'm not right here. I don't know. No, I think I think you were definitely. Yeah, that was definitely the path that you were going down. Uh, but I just I just want to say right now, dude. I just want to say right now, and I can't be more sincere. But you are like one of my favorite people on the planet. You are, man. Seriously, man. Uh, you, uh, just, just your story. And I just can't, I can't imagine uh, the help that you've, you know, you've, you've really been uh, kicked around. But in, but you've come out on top, man. You know what? I, I consider myself a, a bit of a, I don't want to say uh, a walking miracle, but I, I, I do feel like I, given a miracle in some ways because it's uh, it seems like a long road and it is but look what we have now you know i'm talking to you it's mad live tv you know yeah. uh, good things are around the corner yeah you know? <laughs> um, so <laughs> uh so you know I, i've talked about different things uh different segments and different aspects of shows that i'd like to incorporate and uh, one of those uh was just su simply titled uh that call and going back to Crawdaddy, giving you that call to say, hey, man, you want to do some radio? Like, just talk about that, you know, that conversation and how important Crawdaddy is to you. Well, well it started out as one of those mornings where you're, uh, you know, I, I'd gotten up and uh, my wife Janice had already gone to work. And, um, I was sitting down on the couch with the laptop open, you know, and... Um, I heard my phone ring and I checked it and it was it was Crawdaddy, you know, and um, you know we don't we don't we talk to each other often or had, um, but not on this level. Um, certainly, it wasn't a, a day to day level or anything. But um, I was really happy that he texted me and said, "Listen, are you ready to do um, some some uh, some work here in the next few days?" You know, my first thought was, "What are you talking? You know, what we're gonna? You know, what are we doing here?" You know. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're working, they're going to pay us? Are you yeah. and me together? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. But but entertainment being in that field that's that runs in your blood, man. You've always um, you've always been a people person, and I, I've told you that I so much enjoy listening to you on the radio because you're just you're the perfect fit for it. You're the perfect personality. You're the perfect energy. Uh, you you could slide into any format, country even. <laughs> That's good stuff. You know, well, so it, so yeah. it is in your blood, man. It is. Well, yeah. I mean, she's a, she's a New Brunswick Country Music Hall of Famer. Um, you know, she really is a New Brunswick, New Brunswick country, country Music Hall of Fame. It's a mouthful. It, <laughs> it is. And she's been part of that community for, for a long time. So um, it's one of those situations where um, I think I was just bred to entertain a bit, you know, through, through my mom for sure. And through her dad as well, Jack. So, yeah. So what were what what's one of your coolest memories of being a young kid? Uh, you know, going to shows with your mom, like some of the people that you may have met. Looking back at now, going, wow, they're like huge stars. Wow, you know what? That's a good question. When my mom did shows, this is going to show my age. <laughs> when when I when I would go to shows to see my mom when I was younger, so we're talking the seventies here. Okay, so we're talking like nineteen seventy six. Mm -hmm. These were little shows that would happen 45 minutes an hour out of a central town, out of a Moncton, out of a Ferguson, out of St. John, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. This one was in Marishi, and you would have everybody at the end of like a, uh, a festival, you know, or like an exhibition or a fair, whatever you would call it. You know, the fair would come to town, right? Yes, yes. There, Old home week or whatever, there, yes. Several other artists doing um, country music and doing bluegrass music and doing a little bit of rock, you know. That all mm -hmm. the time, you know. It, yeah. it definitely bleeds into you. Mm -hmm. Well, you play what? Do you play any musical instruments? You used to play drums, yes? <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know what? I would love to call it playing. I don't really know who would be classified as that. <laughs> it's just thrashing around on the skins and. Uh... <laughs> certainly look like you could have been in a band. <laughs> <laughs> Looks are so deceiving. Um, yes. um, that, the look has uh, uh, much to do with uh, the fact that there wasn't enough talent there in my hands, I think, to hit the sticks, or uh, grab the sticks correctly and, and pound the skins. I think that's where the issue would lie. Some of my best, some of my best memories of like early twenties are when I was when I was at community college, and, and the gang was there, like uh, you know the Cat House, Sea World, uh, what other places can we name? I, those are just legendary locations, and I don't think I'll, I'll never forget those days ever. You guys named it Sea World after we had already called it the, the Cat House, the Bordello. <laughs> Jeff just put up Bush Gardens across from the Catholic Church. Yeah. Uh, Bush Gardens. I the gardens. Well, you know, uh, and leading... Oh, that's your brother for me. Oh, by the way, congratulations to your sister oh. uh, for finishing the Boston Marathon. Like, oh, it, it's just incredible, Matt. Dude, it was... Uh, I just told a guy today that seeing her for the 37 seconds from first seeing her to her running off the other way, 37 seconds was worth 
the 180 hours I spent on a bus. Is that right? Oh. Wow. Oh, like wow. what? Across the states and back, man. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. not. It's not for everyone. <laughs> But yes, uh, what Jill did, uh, and now she, you know, they finished fifth in the World Masters Games in Auckland, New Zealand. So my sister has just been on this incredible, epic, once in a lifetime trip. Was there any? Uh, or, I mean, I met your sister when I was very young. I was probably eighteen when I met her um, in the fall of '89. Um, my thought of I don't mm. think any of us had ideas she was going to compete in the Boston Marathon, or maybe you did. Well, sadly, uh, this month actually marks 17 years I've been on the West Coast. So there are many uh, cousins, nieces, nephews. There, I've missed so much uh, with my family back east over 17 years. So I, I know that Jill started running, uh, I, I want to say, 10 years ago. I don't know. I'd actually right. like to sit down and interview my sister and say, hey, what have you been doing? <laughs> you know? <laughs> but... Getting back to Boston, hey, unbelievable. Hey, listen, it's got to be cheaper than my rate. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff, good stuff. Um, but let's let's get back to, uh, I was going to talk about Bush Gardens, because uh, we spent a lot of Saturday nights there listening to pirate radio, and we everyone right. loved pirate radio. You are now doing pirate radio on C-103, Moncton's Rock Station, Uh that is that not a, a dream come true? First of all, thanks for the cheap plug. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, you know, we don't even know if anyone's listening at nine o'clock on Saturday. <laughs> really I, I, this I, I listen to C103 uh, an hour before, before when I'm getting ready for this show. I have C103 playing. I love the music on on Moncton's Rock Station. I seriously do. It's great music. Hey, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Well, well, I appreciate you saying so, Matt. Yeah, no, it's good. Uh, first week on Matt TV. Um, we're, we're happy to, to, to be a little bit of a soundtrack to, to people's lives to oh. some degree, you know? Yeah, no, uh, you know, listening to you on the weekends, uh, well, when do you want, what do you, what's your, uh, give yourself a plug, your Saturdays, what, 9 to 3? I, I, I'm a Saturday guy, I'll be, I'm, I'm, I'm at 9 in the morning till 3 in the afternoon on Saturday and Sunday, and, uh, and you know, when there's ever a holiday, you know, like a good Friday, good Friday happens, you yeah. know, uh, there's a holiday Monday, something like that, you'll hear me again. But I'm always on pirate radio, you know, so far. Cry Daddy hasn't kicked me out of the shed yet, so. Who, who's, uh, whose idea was that? Pirate radio, like, uh, you know, Cry Daddy's shed. Like, who who is the brain behind that? Cry Daddy himself? Wow. You know what? That is a really good question because it, that's a two-parter. Because the term pirate radio is different from the shed. Um, I wouldn't want to burst anybody's bubble, but, you know, the real idea behind uh, pirate radio is that you commandeered a signal, mm -hmm. and you've taken charge of the radio station, thereby you can say whatever you like. Yes, yes. Um, the other would be um, something completely different, and what we've managed to do, or I guess, you know, Cross, Sean Crawford has managed to do, is garner an audience, and then when I came in, I think I was lucky enough to catch him on a, on a day where he was willing to accept someone else new hanging with him. In the shed, so to speak, yeah. and that shed was actually, you know, at one time, you know, it was uh, something that C103 um, not auctioned off, but they gave away for a prize. You know, it's been Cry Daddy Shed has always been the story of of Sean Crawford and his hanging out over at his neighbor's house. Okay. You know, and it's not that far removed from home improvement. You know, I mean, I hate, to, you know, <laughs> you know, and that your neighbor is still there, but they see each other. You know, and that place that he used to hang at next door was called the shed, and that's where the, the idea came from. You know, um, it's been so good for me because I, I got to attach myself to something that I already thought was cool, and I just got you know a text one day. I just happened to be I just happened to be by the phone that day. You know, yeah, Couldn't yeah, be anybody else, but it, it happened to be me. You know, yeah. And then uh, <clears throat> after the first show, they got the Nielsen numbers, and like the ratings are up. Keep them. <laughs> <laughs> Who is? Tell me more. Tell me more of this dude. Tell me more of this dude. <laughs> but the, the, <laughs> but the, the chemistry, the chemistry that you and Crawdaddy have is unbelievable, and uh, you both contribute a lot of 
uh, artist and musical knowledge. Where does that come from? Like, do you still have the old school encyclopedias that you're flipping through, or <laughs> you're just well, like what magazine? Like, what is your go-to source to keep you updated with what's going on in the rock and roll community? That's a better way. Wow. Yeah. Th th those are all three good questions, and I'm, I'm going to get indeed. <laughs> Okay, so, oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Old I, school. I, 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 that's, I go that deep with stuff, you know, you know, and uh, that's just, that's just who I am. <laughs> you know, I'm just obsessed with music, yeah. I really am. So, what you're saying is that you like to form your own opinion about something and not be a sheeple. <laughs> <laughs> you know, seriously, that's, that's basically what you're saying, right? You're like, why would you listen to all the critics, like a movie critic? Someone can tell me if a movie is good or bad, but I ultimately will make that decision if I'm going to spend the money and sit in the chair. Sure, sure. So and you should. Yeah. That's, your, that's your God given right. Yes. Well, draw the line like where does where do the people that run the Grammys draw the line and say well we just can't give awards for everything you know that's a question that artists have been asking since the dawn of time you know <laughs> I mean we always wonder how did these how do these things happen you know and for me as a fan um, I love watching those shows as a teenager because the 80s they were there for you they were live very unpredictable. Anything can happen. And on the night that Metallica lost and Jethro Tull, um, everyone felt it. You know, everyone in the hard rock community felt it. It was like, it was betrayal. It was like, how dare you say that you were this type of show and you're really, you're, you're projecting this. Yeah. But in the end of the day, you're giving the award to someone who should not be in the heavy metal genre at all. You know, what does that give you? Yeah. So I guess I come from that area, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's, well, that makes sense, right? That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you, you get your info from the back of albums. Sure. So, that segment that you just, how many of the three-parter did you just fire off at me? You know what? That was the first part, the second part, now I'm going to give you the third okay. part. Okay, all right, well. The third part is um, sitting around on Saturday nights at the Bush Gardens, um, where we would all look at each other with hairspray hair bandanas and smile and laugh at each other and uh, and take back beers and say to ourselves, this is the best time of our lives and remember it. Because those are the best times. You forget to say that while they happen, but they really are the best times. Yeah. And there's something magical about those times because all those songs, when you hear them now, they bring you back to that time. You know, there's something in the back of your brain that makes you connect that way with music. And that part will never go away. It is. <laughs> yeah, well, that's uh, you know that's the whole ball of wax, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I'm breaking breaking out all the cliches, man. But what am I doing? Am I doing okay? No, you know I'm what? The, the, I haven't heard the live audience yet. Have they entered yet? You know what? I I I, I, I need to cue up the uh, the crowd sound. I need a, a, a crowd sound effect. But there are, there are definitely, uh, people are throwing comments up here. i got people liking it. Uh, Beyonce, Jeff is saying Beyonce in the rock category. I think he's joking. Or no, was she, I don't watch the Grammys. I don't watch the Grammys. I don't, I don't really watch award shows. Right, but do you hear the answers the next day, though? Do you hear the next day, you know, when they're, when they, when they're giving out the answers? You know, when you hear it on the, on the TV and on radio and, Online, well, think to yourself, I can't believe Soundgarden didn't win. Somebody cool, you know? Yeah, yeah. But well, Soundgarden, I've always, always, uh, I've always appreciated uh, the vocal range of Chris Cornell and uh, Eddie Vedder. But I, yeah, oh. I, I would take, I, I don't know, I prefer Chris Cornell over over Eddie. I don't know. Do you really? Yeah, that's just maybe I haven't heard enough of them lately. But that's a question. Right. Like, it, for someone who has uh, just completely. Uh, gotten out of the loop as far as what's going on in the rock and roll uh, rock and roll world. Uh, where would you point them to get some information to get caught up? Uh, wow. Yeah. I would definitely go to. Uh, I would definitely go to blabbermouth.net. Um, the, the blabbermouth.net. Yeah. Beginning. Okay. Yeah. Uh, blabbermouth.net. That, that would be it. You know. Um, that's the most central one. You know, as far as everyone clinging to. But um, you know, you can find those people. I find them on Instagram. You know. Um, mm-hmm. You're just not going to turn up and switch and go, nah, no more. I just I'm instantly transported back to the past for three and a half minutes or however long the song lasts, and then boom, I zip back in the back of the moment. <laughs> you know, you've seen that machine they use on Star Trek. You know, you just instantly transported back. But I, but I don't, I don't, uh, I don't appreciate, or I'm not into the music scene as much as you are. For me, musically, I will listen to uh, a rock station. Uh, wherever, is I'll listen to a station, but I, I can probably, and this might be sad to say, but I can count on one hand how many uh, CDs or records I've ever purchased in my life. That's just was not. I like listening to it, but I never made the purchase, right? And seemingly, um, you made that transition to being an announcer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Ye
Okay. Yeah. Was was uh, cleaning her mouth with I think your best man's tie. <laughs> that was the that was the photo that was up on Facebook here like twenty minutes ago. That's actually a true story. That actually did happen. Actually. Well, yeah, I know. I saw the picture of it. <laughs> that's that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Uh, so obviously the wedding went well. It was uh, the weather was great. The weather was nice. Weather was great. Are you yeah. kidding me? It was Las Vegas in September. No, we got married here in Moncton and we had a great party. And then Janice and I went to Las Vegas for ten days. Sweet. Yeah, it was incredible. Um, nice. The only problem was is that on the way there, um, Janice took a really bad cold, so it lasted pretty much the entire time, or it did the entire time we were away, plus two weeks afterwards. So she was in in uh, in, in really bad health. As far as having a cold, you don't want to have that when you're, you know, when you go down. So, no. it was a celebration, you know, and, and honeymoon and all that good stuff. But uh, she persevered, and uh, we ended up having a, a wonderful honeymoon. And uh, it was um, it was one of those things where we got to see, um, you know, one night you go see Daryl Hall and John Oates. Nice. Right? And the next night we go see Megadeth. Seriously? Yes. <laughs> I would love to see Megadeth, man. That'd be awesome. Do they still have, is it still the original singer? Is it uh, Dave Mustaine? Is that who it is? It is. Oh. You know, I saw Slaughter here a few months ago at uh, one of the casinos. And how'd you, find, how'd you find the show? It was it was nothing I didn't know what to expect. I'd never been to that venue before. But it was just uh, I couldn't believe how close like I could have reached out and, and shook his hand when he was walking by. Right. That's how close I was, but I flash back to when they were doing stadiums, dude. Stadiums. Remember when we went to Portland? Yes. And I got—I was in a big panic. I wanted to get in the front row. I got in the front row, but I missed my opportunity to meet him. Oh! <laughs> Still haunts me. <laughs> you know, they happen to be staying at the Ramada. I know. I know. Ramada you guys knew exactly where they were staying. <laughs> working at the Savy Z, I would, uh, I would have to work a Saturday morning. I can't even kid about this. I would have to work a Saturday morning. But Friday night or Friday afternoon, we would drive and see a concert Friday night in Portland, and I'd be back to work for my Saturday shift. Unbelievable. Dedication. Unbelievable. Hey, when you're going to see, uh, you know, ACDC for the first time, you make some sacrifices. So you saw ACDC, see that's dedication. You saw ACDC on and then went to work the next day. Yes, or it was it was a concert in Portland. It may have even been Old Orchard Beach. I'm not sure, but I was always back for the eight o'clock shift on Saturday. You know, people would be like, uh, so I'd ask someone Saturday morning, so you know, what'd you do last night? Oh, I went to, uh, you know, I walked to Stedman's or something. You know, they 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 did the loop like a thousand times. Why would you do? Oh, I went and saw uh, Kiss and Slaughter. <laughs> Sucker. And you know. I did, actually. Uh, did you? Yes. Uh, you're right. Kiss was there, and they were playing in Moncton. Uh, if someone, there's a text message on the top of my phone. I don't know if that's blocking the view or not. Uh, no, I actually remember I was sitting in, because uh, I knew, I knew that Paul Stanley had fallen off a stage the night before and had some rib damage. Right. And a that's friend right. of mine, a friend of mine, I'll never forget, a friend of mine came up as I was sitting uh, recess in the gym. Uh, he came up and told me that the concert was canceled, but he said it in a way like, "Man, the concert's canceled. Screw you!" And I was—he was so mean about it. I was like devastated. But it was the way he—it was, uh, was a bad day. Uh, just once, how is anyone watching right now? Um, I got someone phoned me. I thought for sure I had my phone on Do Not Disturb, so I had a phone call which may have blocked the video. And now I have a now I have a message on the top of my phone saying I have a voicemail. So I'm just wondering if it has affected the camera on this end. No. Well, it's all good, I guess. It's just really annoying because I can't see my head anymore. 
so uh, we got a few more minutes here, dude. I I just want to quickly talk to you about. Do you, are you following hockey? Are you are, are you following any of the playoffs? Yeah. I was just watching the Senators actually pretty calm. Oh, are they? Yeah, they're playing tonight. What's the? Uh, they're up. What's that series at anyway? Two one. Well, it was that? It was at two nothing, and now that the uh, the last time I checked, uh, the Rangers were up for like three or four one. So uh, they were in the third period. So um, I think it's probably two one by now. But okay, because they need to. Well, the Rangers need to win to make the series interesting. But uh, it's it's fun now. Uh, knowing that when the Rangers are playing in New York, that at one time I was across the street at a motel there. It's just now I know the geographical area, so I know what's happening. You know, when there's, it's just kind of weird when you've been to uh, New York City and Times Square, and you see it on the news, you're like, hey, I was there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I said that. Did not, did that not sound like someone who's like twelve? Hey, man, I was in New York. Yeah, we've all been there. Get over it. No. <laughs> And uh, I have not been all over the world, but I can tell you, I've been some places, but I've never been to New York. Mm -hmm. it's, it's on my list. It's on my list, Janet, and um, I'm hopefully we'll get there at some point in the next few years. But um, yeah, I they listen. Not everybody's been to New York. Not yeah. everybody's been to California. I guess it's, it's it's nothing to sneeze at. I guess it is something to uh, to go to the Big Apple for sure. And, and to go and to go there with uh, to go there with my daughter Kaya and my niece Anna was just oh we had so much fun so much fun uh, but the reason I asked you no 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 uh, the reason that I asked you about hockey um, I don't know if you were following last night's uh, Washington uh, Pittsburgh Crosby getting his bell rung. Well, he's for sure. Yeah, he's for sure out for the next game. Uh, you know, if he if he's been diagnosed with a concussion, that'll be his fourth concussion. But so we all know concussions aren't good. But I just want to uh, tell you what he has done, because you and I are both very goal driven. We're very uh, goal oriented. Whether it's daily, weekly, we get focused, and if there's a task that we need to do, we just do it, right? Absolutely. Listen to this. Listen to Crosby. L listen to what this, how old is Crosby? D -d 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 27, 28? Uh, <clears throat> so this is what he's done in the last three years. The last three years, he's won the 2014 Olympic gold medal in Sochi, 2015 World Championship with Canada, a Stanley Cup Conn Smythe MVP trophy last spring, to leading Canada to a World Cup of Hockey victory last September. Yeah, it sounds like he's been sitting on his ass. <laughs> really? Hello? You might want to lace up them skates a little tighter. That is just unbelievable. But what's more unbelievable is the amount of money that's being tied up in, in, that, in that gentleman and what happens to, um, you know, those guys and, and, and women who make it to that top level. So much money and corporate money is being put behind you. Um, I can't imagine being part of the Pittsburgh Penguins and not happening. I can't imagine. No, it's, it would be devastating. Absolutely. Like, why, why uh, it seems that some of... And I mean, Ovechkin was, was the first guy that whacked him over the back with a stick. Right, yeah. So, uh, why, why, are we, why are we taking out the best players of the game... People are spending their hard-earned money to go see their favorite sports team. They want to see the best players in the game. Like, how awesome would it be to be living in Pittsburgh, Washington, New York right now, Ottawa, Edmonton, but to have one of the best players in the game hacked to the ground and then cross-checked, uh, how there's no suspension, I have no idea. Uh, you know what? You'll have to ask the NHL referees, uh, Commission, you know, this summer when they're when everyone else is playing golf, as far as the players go, um, you know, those guys are in a room somewhere with uh, uh, watching videos of you know bad days that they had, and I'm sure their boss, you know, taking it out, going, well, yeah, by the by the way, you know, game six Pittsburgh, that was a bad night. You know what I mean? Like they have to answer to somebody too. You know, this is what he was listening to. That is actual. That is actual audio from inside Crosby's head. <laughs> hey, 
I hope he's all right. Seriously, man. I mean, they got to stop hedge hunting these guys. No. I always wanted to be a I always wanted to be a celebrity thirty years ago maybe. Yeah. No, not now. Big gravy and everyone following you around following you around. Oh well, yeah, that's that that to me it would be uh just no way to live. Just paparazzi everywhere? No. no. Yeah, yeah little birdies flying around. around. Yeah. <laughs> uh Jeez, of course. Listen listen, dude, I have um I've had a lot of fun chatting with you and I uh, I hope the people listening um, had as much fun as we did. I think they did. But I haven't seen any middle finger emojis going across the screen, so we must be doing all right. <laughs> are, you, are you sure everything's okay? Like, did, are you sure that people did enjoy that a little bit tonight? I think so. Uh, I have lots of uh, I got lots of likes and comments, so it's all good, my That's friend. Good. You know what? Honestly, <laughs> dude, honestly, dude, if it was just you and I having a conversation right now. That would be okay too. I would be good with that too. That'd you know, oh, um, yeah. and, and I always enjoy talking to you, Matthew. I, I always did. You know, uh, I don't want to get all sentimental on you, but um, I appreciate you. Uh, I think I, I actually said to you this time, "Hey, you know, I'm ready for a phone or any time." You know, mm -hmm. because I am. Um, I had gotten really some great news. You know, that I was employed by um, New Cap Radio, and uh, I've been on C103 doing weekends and doing good right now, so, good. you know, that's, that's good, it's, good for me and, and, and good for family and friends, you know, so. It is, it's uh, for, yeah, definitely good for you, definitely for everyone that uh, surrounds you with love, and I'm so happy that you're back on the airwaves, man, that is, that's where you belong, you, I, I can tell that you, you love what you do, you can hear it in your delivery, uh, you know how to connect with people, and you're exactly... Uh, where you belong, and I wish you nothing but continued success, and we'll definitely, uh, we're going to stay in touch, because this Matt TV is, uh, it's growing legs, and I want to take as many people along for the ride as I possibly can. Um, oh, and that, uh, that leads me to this, uh, before I forget, I would love, and we'll talk about this off camera maybe another day, but I would like, uh, think about it, you and Crawdaddy to maybe voice some liners that I can use in the show. Just for segments that I already have, I would just like to have uh, a voiceover for it. So just something to think about. You would definitely be uh, the person that I would want doing it. Well, I appreciate it, but as you know, uh, Crawdaddy and I spend the most uh, expensive amount of money at lunch hours. We go around to the, the finest of steak and seafood uh, establishments in the Greater Moncton area. We rack up crazy bills at lunch hour and uh, eat, eat that kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, I don't know if we'd have time for that. <laughs> We're just too busy, you know, sampling food and whatnot and uh, all that life has. No, I mean, hey, listen, I'll, I'll ask New Cap Radio and see if it's okay. okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, like, seriously, would you have to bring them into the mix for that? Well, I, you know, there are certain, I don't know about that in you know, particular, but I, I think that you have to, uh, I think you have to acknowledge. Yes, yes, uh, yes. If you've gone and done it. Yeah. But, um, I don't think there's any stipulations as far as um, just using per perfect grammar, which I'm known to do. Yes. I use perfect grammar. No, I think that would be, uh, <coughs> I think that would be, a human being, you know? I think that would be great if, uh, if you and Crawdaddy could do that, it'd be good. I would love to, and I'm sure we can come to uh, a good little, um, some good segments. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, I already have, like, uh, you know, the last 24, Wayne the Great, Toby's Edmiston Weather, William's Wacky Sound, but that's... I just want, like, one-liners. Yeah. But anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about it. Can I just add really love the set before I go? Thank you, man. Yeah, I it's... Really uh, set tonight. You I know... Mean, you really did a great job. It looks like a studio. It, really it, it, I know. It's... Uh, I had uh, three friends come over on, on Sunday. We yeah. just... Uh, we gutted the place and turned it around. But there is... Like I said, this, there's a direction that this show is going in. Uh, I put a lot of time. I put a lot of time and effort into the show. I mean, it's uh, sixty minutes a night, five hours a week, uh, twenty hours out of the month. So <clears throat> it's a challenge to find uh, things to play around with and uh, make the show interesting. So, but that being said, uh, I'm looking for advertisers and sponsors. That's the they next. That's the next venture. Oh, definitely. They will come. Yeah. You know, my friends um, on the TPI 
Yes Network, um, I'm Brian Langelin and Chris Glidden. Um, what's the finish? They were nominated at the East Coast Music Awards this past weekend in St. John uh, for Best Podcast. And they were there all weekend and they got their tickets and they got to enjoy all that St. John has to offer. Um, you know, the ECMAs in St. John, it's a huge, huge deal. They did big numbers there, huge numbers actually. Mm-hmm. And they did they did great numbers on tickets, Matt, before, you know, months before the show started. So a bunch of people got to play, you know, music live. Um, you know, like, and I don't mean just giant rock groups. I'm talking about two people on acoustic guitar, you know, making wonderful music for mm-hmm. everybody, you know. So it nice. does good for everybody to enjoy, you know. Yeah, no, I, uh, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it, and uh, you're having a lot of fun with what you're doing, and uh, I've been manifesting a lot of great stuff, and this month I know is just going to be uh, an unbelievable month. How do you sleep at night? Do you sleep? Seriously, I don't know how you do. Do you sleep? I do, and I sleep quite well, actually. It, I, I've, i got to shut my brain off. I've got to shut my brain off. How do you go about doing that? How do you shut that brain off? I don't know. I, I, it can be quite a task sometimes. Maybe not completely shut it off, but just quiet it down. Yeah. But I, I find I, this, is, this is my outlet. This is my creative outlet. Some people paint. Some people uh, do archery, shoot guns, uh, go bike riding, j- jog, run. This, this is my life right here. I have, at 44, uh, I am so comfortable sitting in this position. And people have to remember, this is 60 minutes. There's no teleprompter here. There's no script here. This is all ad lib. Everything that is being put forward right here on camera is the result of my hard work. Um, but it would be nothing without an audience, yes? Right. But, but I just think the fact that Matt TV exists in the form that we see it, you know, five nights a week, um, you know, on our, on our screen, on our device of choice, it's a pretty great bonus because you have someone like yourself who is, uh, you know, diplomatic and honest and uh, wants to show people a better way mm-hmm. and, um, you know, comes from a, a really good background, a good family and, and, and cares for the things, uh, but also is cutting edge and has opinions, you know, mm-hmm. and there there's right and there's wrong. And I think that those things are really cool to discuss in the form that you have there. So I'm really happy to be part of it tonight and I'm, I'm uh, blessed to be alive and I'm really happy to be part of Matt TV tonight so dude we are we are blessed that you are still alive you uh, uh, you bring so much joy uh, to me personally and I know you have tons of family and friends who have uh, never left your side ever so on that note I say uh, thank you so much for being a part of Matt TV you are my first phone interview uh, for this month and it's going to be an exciting month. I wish you were here because I'd have you sign the Canadian flag behind me. I, I would love to be there to sign anything, really. Well, you know what? When, uh, yeah, when when I take this on the road, uh, you know, I, I'd like to get back east sooner than later. You know, I've been under 17 years. I don't get home that often. But I promise you, dude, the next time I'm home, we are going to get together. And when we do, we'll just do a Matt TV. I love it. I'm, I'm already, I'm already there. In cool. my mind, I'm already there. Take care of yourself, Matt. All right, Thank thanks. You. Yeah, thanks, dude. We'll uh, we'll be in touch. Love you, man. Anytime, brother. Okay. Bye. All right, that was uh, that was Darren O'Donnell. That was dude. He is uh, a cancer survivor like I've never seen. Uh, four times he's battled cancer and uh, just recently married. Uh, you can hear him weekends, Saturday, Sunday, nine to three. On C103, Moncton's Rock Station. Uh, good stuff. Uh, we are coming up on uh, 7 o'clock. We're going to wrap this up here real quick. I just want to let you know what's happening tomorrow night, who I'm talking to. Uh, tomorrow night, I will be doing two phone interviews. I will be talking with uh, Morgan O'Shea. She's Vancouver's NDP candidate. Uh, Morgan is hoping to become the first transgender MLA in British Columbia. I'll be talking with her tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Then I'll be talking with Monica Blihar. You're not going to want to miss those two conversations. Uh, 7 o'clock. I'm going to reconfigure the camera for tomorrow night. Thank you, Laura, for your input. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching tonight. Uh, all, the, all the live views, all the comments are greatly appreciated. If you like what you see in here, please spread the word. 
and I now have to get up from my chair and walk over and turn off the off the camera. So, uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you. We'll see you tomorrow night, six o'clock.